Today we're going to talk about the most important things you need to know if you have acid reflux. So I have this diagram of the stomach. There's a valve on the top part and there's a valve on the lower part. The valve on the top prevents acid in food from regurgitating up through the esophagus. The valve on the bottom controls the food from the stomach into the small intestine as well as controlling the food and bile from regurgitating back up into the stomach. So both of these valves are sphincters. Okay, it's like a circular muscle that is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. So the muscular control is kind of a gradual contraction and a gradual relaxation until it's fully open. And so the problem we have with these valves is they're, if they're open at the wrong time or closed at the wrong time, we can have a big problem with acid and bile ending up in the wrong place. Now, because they're controlled by the autonomic nervous system, that means that they're highly influenced with this thing called stress. And this is why there are so many digestive problems that can be affected by stress, like acid reflux, heartburn, and the list goes on and on and on. And so if you have acid reflux and a lot of stress, you know, you're going to have to do something to reduce that stress before it starts improving. Now, the other thing that controls these sphincters is calcium. Calcium has the function of muscular contraction, so it helps close these sphincters. But most of the time, people are lacking the vitamin that controls calcium, and I'm talking about vitamin D. If you're deficient in vitamin D, you're not going to have enough calcium, and the valve is not going to close fully. And incidentally, vitamin D also acts like cortisol in the body, and it has a lot to do with controlling stress, and by taking vitamin D, that can actually help reduce your stress and can help directly close the valve just from the uh, function of vitamin D itself. Now, the other cause of this valve on the top of the stomach opening at the wrong time is because you don't have enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Apparently, there are receptors or sensors in that valve for hydrochloric acid. So we have this synchronization of food coming through, the valve closing, and acid increasing so you can get a complete digestion. So if you don't have enough hydrochloric acid or the acid in your stomach is not acid enough, that valve might not close and that can cause the regurgitation effect. So what can cause a deficiency of hydrochloric acid? Well, one is low chlorides, as in low salt. So if you're on a low salt diet or not taking enough sea salt, that could be the reason why you don't have enough hydrochloric acid. Also, it takes potassium to also make hydrochloric acid. So you need those electrolytes as the building blocks to make hydrochloric acid. Now, another big cause of low hydrochloric acid is medication-induced hypochlorhydria. That is low stomach acid caused by antacids, especially the PPIs. Now, there are also foods that actually can aggravate the situation. Gluten, grains, sugar, of course, alcohol, and omega-6 fatty acids, as in all the soy oil, the canola oil, the corn oil, the cottonseed oil, and of course, all the processed foods and the junk foods. Those can not only disrupt the opening and closing of the valves, but they can also disrupt the production of hydrochloric acid. Let me first talk about the importance of hydrochloric acid, okay? Number one, its role in intestinal hormones. You have all sorts of hormones that are involved in your digestion in your small intestine that's secreted from the pancreas, that's secreted from the small intestine itself. And without hydrochloric acid, they can't work. A lot of the enzymes that are in the upper part of the digestive system, they're activated by a certain pH. And hydrochloric acid, being an acid, activates these enzymes so they can work. All right, number two, HCL prepares folate and B12 for absorption. Number three, hydrochloric acid helps the absorption of minerals. I'm talking about calcium, magnesium, potassium, zinc, and iron. All right, number four, hydrochloric acid is also necessary for something called the intrinsic factor for the absorption of B12, another mechanism of B12 absorption. If you don't have enough B12, you're going to have a lot of neurological problems and a lot of pain from nerve damage. All right, next one is HCL is vital in the prevention of small intestinal 
bacterial overgrowth. This is the prevention of bacteria growing in the small intestine. That's the wrong place. We want bacteria growing in the large colon, not the small intestine. And so without hydrochloric acid, you can get SIBO. HCL is vital in preventing pathogens, microbes that are unfriendly, going through the stomach and invading the body. So we need this hydrochloric acid to kill off unfriendly bacteria, fungus, viruses that are in our foods. And also HCL is vital in preventing food allergies because we want to take this protein, break it down fully into amino acids. And so if it's not fully broken down, your immune system can react to it and you can develop allergies. Now, all right, so let me just touch briefly on the valve on the bottom part of the stomach, okay? And this valve is very important in preventing bile from regurgitating up into the stomach and then up into the esophagus. Bile can irritate the esophagus just as much as hydrochloric acid because it's a detergent and it can break down the mucus layer and create a lot of pain and irritation. Now, there's three main culprits or problems with that happening. Number one, excess belly fat. If you have too much visceral fat, all that fat can put pressure up into this area and cause a regurgitation of bile back up into the stomach. Number two, hiatal hernia. And for more information about that, I put a video down below so you can learn a real simple technique to help that condition. And lastly, if you have a gallbladder problem, or you have bile sludge, or even gallstones that it's obstructing the flow of bile, that can create a backup bile into the system. And the solution for that is purify bile salts. All right, so what are the very important things you need to do if you have acid reflux? Number one, I would recommend starting out taking betaine hydrochloride. Betaine hydrochloride is a really good remedy for acid reflux. It's going to increase the concentration of acid in your stomach. And the problem with a lot of people when they take betaine hydrochloride is they think that uh, one or two with a meal is going to solve it. Usually they're going to need a lot more, maybe five, six, seven, eight with a meal, uh, especially in the beginning. And you would want to take it right before the meal. And you'll see it'll create a huge improvement in the digestion of your food and a lessening of the backup of acid that's coming into your esophagus. Also, apple cider vinegar is very, very important to add with that. And you'll find great relief if you add both of those together. Now, if you're taking betaine hydrochloride and apple cider vinegar and you feel worse, it aggravates the problem, that could mean you either have an ulcer or gastritis, in which case you need to switch your plan of action and start taking chlorophyll or some organic raw wheatgrass juice powder so that can help heal the irritation in your esophagus and your stomach. The best vegetable or even food for acid reflux is cabbage, okay? All forms of cabbage and even sauerkraut. So make mental note of that. All right, number three, very important, reduce your stress. Do whatever you can to reduce your stress. I have a thousand videos on how to do that. All right, number four, intermittent fasting. If you're consuming six small meals or eating frequently, just think about what's happening. You're stressing the entire digestive system. Intermittent fasting, the decrease of frequency of eating, especially if you can do two meals or even one meal a day, that's called OMAD, will greatly improve your acid reflux. Why? Because it gives your digestive system a chance to reset and heal and not work so hard. All right, number five, vitamin D. I have already mentioned that. Very important to prevent acid reflux. Number six, zinc L-carnosine is not only good for ulcers, gastritis, but it's also good for GERD and acid reflux. In fact, zinc L-carnosine is good for anything that's inflamed in your entire gastrointestinal tract. And number seven, taking a very good probiotic. Because if you have the microbes helping you digest in the lower part of your, your system, that'll take a huge stress off the top part of the digestive system because they're all connected. All right, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.